Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another episode of PSVR News. Today's episode is quite exciting. I think you'll find your nipples will get stiff or your your things below will get excited. I don't know how it works. I don't know what goes on down there, but I think this news is going to excite whatever you've got going on down there. All right. But before we get into it, let me please just ask you if you could hit that like button if you like the video, dislike it if you don't like it, or subscribe and all that usual YouTube and shite, you know, comments, whatever. With that YouTube shite out of the way, let's just jump right into it. Starting with this. You may have heard of a little game called Farpoint. That game came out in, I believe, 2017, and when it did come out, it launched with this. The aim controller, we're all familiar with this thing, all right? Impulse gear were practically the guys who created this. I know they had help from Sony or whatever. They put all the development into not only Farpoint, but the controller to go along with it. And I think we all agree that Farpoint is a pretty decent game. I know it's in a lot of people's top 10s or top 20s or whatever. And personally, I thought it was a great game as well. But Impulse Gear have been really, really silent for the past three years or so since that game came out and we've kind of always been expecting maybe at this E3 they'll say something, or this PSX, or State of Play, or whatever. Unfortunately, they've been just quiet since then. That all changes right now, because Impulse Gear have put up this little post here. We'll talk about this picture that they put up in a sec, but let's just read this real quick. So, Impulse Gearing up. Bit of a play on words there. It has been a while since you heard from us, and now it's finally time for an update, and I couldn't agree more. So, first of all, thank you for your continued support. We've been hard at work exploring the possibilities of virtual reality, learning from our work on Fairpoint, and building something special. We look forward to sharing more with you soon. And we have so much to share. Since we launched Fairpoint, we expanded the team and moved into our new office in the heart of San Francisco Financial District. We embraced new technologies and development methods, and we iterated on many, many ideas. We also adapted to the pandemic and transitioned to a fully remote workplace. And we got another little picture here. We'll talk about that real soon. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot more of us over the course of the next couple of months. In the meantime, stay safe and remember survivors keep moving and survivors keep moving was like the catchphrase or the, not the catchphrase, slogan or tagline, I guess you would say, of Fairpoint. So, you could interpret that as a possible hint to Fairpoint sequel, uh, which I'm not saying that's what this is. It could be absolutely anything. It might not even be on PSV or it could be PCV or God forbid, if something like that were to happen, we'd lose our minds. But uh, as you can see in this picture here, there is a bunch of post-it notes and the one down below as well. And it has the caption down here as the results of a brainstorming session. Now all of these, well, not all of them, but most of them have been blurred so that you can't read what's actually been said. The few of them that haven't been blurred are kind of just so vague that you couldn't possibly figure anything out. Well, you, maybe you can, but I can't possibly figure anything out. Uh, I think I see something here that says AL. What could that be? This pink one here looks like it starts with a Z or E, Zor, or maybe Zare, Zach. I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody in the who's watching, maybe somebody who's watching this right now can have a look and see if they can... Uh, make anything out. This one here is a little bit better. The words are slightly clearer. This one here says what is something. I think it might say what is home. And this one here says the dangers of isolation, I believe. So that kind of all ties up. If you've played Farpoint, you know at the very end you're trying to get home. Uh, you end up going someplace different and maybe this involves being isolated and whatnot. So this, these themes do line up with Farpoint. Well, if you could call them themes, I guess you could. What is home? The dangers of isolation. All these other things. I think the last word in this one says safety. And there's a weird picture. Some scribbles and loops and swirls or whatever. So I don't know. Maybe someone out there with a magnifying glass and like some top of the range de-blurring software. Someone from CSI Miami or whatever can de-blur these and figure out what they say. So that we can get an idea of what Impulse Gear are working on next. Of course, this is exciting for another reason because if these guys are working on a Fairpoint 2, and let's just say it comes out in the next generation uh, PS5 virtual reality headset, so PS Viewer 2 or whatever they end up calling us, there is the possibility that we'll see a new aim controller. Maybe adaptive triggers, like what we have in the DualSense now. Fancy adaptive triggers, 
and maybe some nice haptic feedback, you know, all that kind of stuff would be very welcome. And of course, uh, get rid of the light track and we don't want that anymore. We want something more precise, no more drift, all that kind of stuff. So Impulse Gear, very, very important studio, I would say. Uh, definitely something you should be keeping an eye on if you're interested in PSV or whatsoever. And they said in a couple of months we might hear something, so that doesn't seem too far away. So we'll be keeping our ears to the ground, and when they do say something, I'll be making a video about it. Okay, so that's the Farpoint slash Impulse Gear news out of the way, so let's move on to the next topic, the next news story of today, which is from Upload Viewer, as you can see on the screen here beside me, and it reads, Metro, Dead Island, Kingdom Come have good opportunities for virtual reality, according to Ka Media, or maybe that's Cock Media, or maybe that's Koch Media, I don't know how to say that. I think I might go with Cock Media for obvious reasons. This is from Jamie Feltham, and this is all taken from an interview with Cock Media CEO Clemens Kundratitz. Kundratitz, what a name. And this interview was with the website MCV, but Upload Viewer have done a good job of you know, compacting it down to what we are interested in. So let's take a look. So two months ago, Calc Media announced the acquisition of Arizona Sunshine developer Vertigo Games. It was a surprising move for the company, which also owns other game publishers like Deep Silver under its own label and is connected to Saber Interactive and THQ Nordic, the parent company. So Vertigo will continue to work on viewer projects, including the upcoming After the Fall. But as Calc Media Clemens Kundratitz told MCV, the deal also signals that we could see other cock associated <laughs> studios <laughs> embrace VR. I need to grow up, I'm sorry. Metro VR could happen. So this is quoted directly from Mr. Kundratitz. <laughs> yes, there is a big interest from various studios now to engage and how that will materialize in VR games, we need to see. Uh, we run our company in a sort of a decentralized way where the studios have a lot of autonomy on one hand, but also are part of the family and we're gonna play it the same way with virtual reality. Nobody's gonna be forced to do the next game in VR, but on the other hand, if the idea is suitable, if there is an appetite from the development point of view, then we now have great opportunities to not only dream of it, but actually make it. So this is by no means a guarantee. He's basically saying, if the developers want to do this, we're not gonna stop them. That sounds like what he's saying. Uh, so it might be a good idea to, uh, I won't, I'm not gonna say harass, but to let these studios, these developers know, the developers of Metro, Dead Island, and Kingdom Come, you know, let these guys know, uh, hey, we are fans of your games and we'd love to see them on VR, and then all of a sudden they may, they might consider us, and then if they consider us, Cock Media is not gonna stop them. Mr. Kundratitz is gonna say, A-okay. Specifically, Kundratitz seems to have <laughs> teased, that's, that's, I'm probably saying that wrong. Kundratitz, I'm saying it right. I'm saying it right. Specifically, Kundratit seems to have... <laughs> seems to tease that some of its biggest series, including Metro, Kingdom Come, and Dead Island, could be well suited for VR. So he's quoted as saying, Yes, Metro is certainly an important IP that we have. Kingdom Come Deliverance is another big one. Dead Island is a big one. So there are good opportunities in our stable of IPs. This is purely speculative quotes and by no means confirmation, though it certainly seems Cock and Embracer are more optimistic about the possibilities of VR versions of their games than other publishers. So, I love to hear a developer, or rather publisher maybe in this case, saying, hey, we're not going to rule out VR, whereas so many other, the other developers and publishers are saying, oh, you know, VR is not quite there yet, and we want to wait for the market to be more developed before we enter it. Mr. Kundratitz is like, you know what, if the guys want to do this, and even though we got a big family and they're all part of us, we still give them a lot of freedom, creatively, uh, to make these kind of decisions themselves. Uh, so I think that's that's very positive and from our point of view. Now, of course, even if all these do come to VR, no guarantee they're coming to PS VR 1 anyway, and they're probably years and years away if they do come. Unless they've been working on them already, but I don't know, we'll wait and see. Anyway, that is it for this video, lads and ladies. Before I go, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as I speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping this channel stay nice and moist. In particular, let me give a shout out to the following top tier Patreon moist pumpkins. We got Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Tradition, Crumb, Pete Hawkins, Child 517, and Columbus Thomas III. Thank you very much for that generosity, lads. I really do appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. If you too would like to help out over on the old Patreon, you can do so. The link will be in the description below. But if not, don't worry about that. I'll be happy with the likes, comments, 
subscribes if you haven't already, you know, all that usual YouTube and shice. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out at Decepticon.com. The link to that will also be in the description below. With that, I will end this video, lads and ladies. Please, until the next one, stay absolutely moist.